Hello! In this video, we will briefly introduce a few popular machine learning algorithms. These include decision trees, support vector machines, and neural networks. We will also provide a brief introduction to reinforcement learning and its applications towards the end. In the last few videos, we discussed a general framework for supervised learning. Essentially, we wanted to find a mapping or a tunable function that fit the training data and produced an output Y hat. Now, there are many possibilities for the specific tunable functions we may use in machine learning algorithms. So far, we have discussed a few types of tunable functions, such as linear regression models. However, there are many more. Today, we will talk about some other popular ones and their applications. Let's start off with decision trees. Decision trees are a classic method in machine learning. They can classify the inputs by using a set of rules organized into a tree structure. For example, in this binary tree, each node can have two children which are referred to as the left child and the right child. The initial node is called the root and the bottom nodes are known as the leaf nodes. To perform a classification, given the input feature vector x1, x2 and so on, we start at the root and end up at one of the leaves which determine the class. Each node in a decision tree evaluates a rule which could be in the form of xi less than v or, for example, xi equals v. Here, xi represents one feature in the input vector, and v is a single value. We can use the tree to classify an input. We start from the root at the top, and at each node, we travel to one of its children, based on the rule results. We continue this until we reach a leaf at the bottom. Each leaf node is associated with a class, which determines the output of the classification task. Let's look at a simple example that illustrates how decision trees work. Say we want to give a diagnosis where based on some information about a patient's symptoms, we would like to classify the patient to one of four categories. Flu, cold, the third one is that the person is healthy, and other. This picture shows a simple hypothetical decision tree. We start from the root by asking, what's your body temperature? Based on the answer, we follow up with more questions. Do you have a sore throat? Do you have a stuffy nose? The tree would then classify these symptoms into flu, cold, healthy, or other. This would be a four-way classification problem. The root of the tree tests whether your temperature is greater than 100 or not. Let's say your temperature is greater than 100. Then we check to see if you have a stuffy nose. The answer is either yes or no. If it is yes, then we say that you have the flu. And if it is no, we would say the patient had something else or other. Note that here we provided a simple hypothetical tree structure to show the basic idea, so it cannot be used for real diagnosis. Also, note that since the structure of the tree the number of the nodes and the ordering of the rules for xi's could be changed, this tree structure can be thought of as a special case of our general model of tunable functions. That is, in the training phase, we build a tree that best matches the training data. Thus, all of the previous discussions on bias, variance, and overfitting applies here as well. For example, if we are building a very large tree with lots of nodes, we are essentially building a complex model, so we are in the danger of overfitting. Support Vector Machines, or SVMs, are another class of supervised learning algorithms that can be used for classification. In their simplest form, SVMs are linear classifiers. Let's assume there are two features in our input vector, x1 and x2. This picture shows our training data, where the blue points are labeled as plus 1, and the red ones are labeled as minus 1. Now, a linear classifier would use a line as a decision boundary. Points on one side of the line are classified as plus 1, and points on the other side are classified as minus one. If a line exists that can separate the blue points and red points in the training data perfectly, we say the training data is linearly separable. But in such a case, there will be infinitely many such lines. Which one of them should we choose? The idea behind SVMs is that we aim to find the line with the maximum margin as our decision boundary, assuming, of course, the training data is linearly separable. In general, if we have more than two features, the linear decision boundary is called a hyperplane. Similarly, we can ask what is the best separating hyperplane among the set of hyperplanes that perfectly classify all the training data. SVM asserts that the best separator is the separator that will result in the largest margin. In other words, the hyperplane that has the largest distance to the nearest training data points. The closest points to the decision boundary are called support vectors, hence the name support vector machine. Thus, the support vectors are the data points that determine the separating hyperplane. SVMs 
can also be used for the cases where the data is not linearly separable by introducing a penalty in the cost function for misclassified points. Also, using kernels, SVMs can be used to create nonlinear classifiers. Neural networks are a popular machine learning method. In machine learning, the area of neural networks was originally started as a way to mimic the functioning of human brains. The idea is, since humans learn, maybe we can use the brain structure to help computers learn better. Neural networks have since become an important class of machine learning methods. The figure in the left shows a simple mathematical model of a neuron, which can be thought of as the building block of artificial neural networks. The structure of this neuron can be considered as a special case of a tunable function that we have discussed. Here, x1, x2, and x3 are inputs, and we have a tunable function since the coefficients wi's can be tuned. Now, you can combine many of these artificial neurons in different layers to create a neural network shown in the right figure. Thus, in neural networks, the output of some neurons can become the input to other neurons. Neural network models are often organized into distinct layers of neurons. The training phase works as usual. Using the labeled training data, we can use gradient descent to obtain the parameters w that minimize the loss. This process is called backpropagation. As you increase the number of layers and the number of neurons in each layer, you get a more complex, thus more flexible and powerful overall function. However, we have to make sure to avoid overfitting as we described in the previous videos. The term deep learning also refers to neural networks when we have many layers. Deep learning models that use these basic ingredients have become very popular in AI. Computer vision and speech recognition are just two examples to start with. Many companies use deep learning-based vision systems to analyze photos and images. Google and others have used deep learning-based speech recognition systems. There are different types of neural networks, such as convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. As we have discussed in previous videos, there are different approaches to machine learning. We previously discussed unsupervised and supervised learning. Another approach is reinforcement learning, which refers to the process of learning through experiences. Consider how a child may learn not to touch a hot cup of tea. The child would face a negative reward from touching the hot cup, the consequence being a high level of inflicted pain. When the child does not touch the hot cup, there is no pain. Eventually, after a few tries, the child will learn that it is better to leave the hot cup of tea alone. In terms of reinforcement learning, or RL, the child is an agent that interacts with an environment, that is, the hot cup of tea, and learns by taking actions, for example, touch or not touch that maximizes the reward, lower pain in this case. The training examples did not have labels declaring what the child should have done, but instead graded the different actions that were made. This is how we characterized RL. The examples don't contain the target output, but instead some measurement of how good the output is. The RL algorithm sorts out different information coming from different examples or experiences to find the best policy based on the rewards obtained. RL has been very successfully used in gaming. For example, DeepMind, a leader in AI which is owned by Google, designed the first computer program to ever beat a professional player at the game of Go, a game that is known as one of the most challenging classical games for artificial intelligence because of its complexity. They used RL to train the agent to take actions that maximize the expected reward. In summary, in this video, we first discussed decision trees. Decision trees can classify data examples using a set of rules organized into a tree structure. We talked about SVMs, another supervised learning algorithm that is used for classification and is one of the most robust prediction methods. The SVM approach is based on the idea of finding the maximum margin decision boundary. This linear decision boundary is called a hyperplane. We discussed the concept of neural networks, which was originally inspired by biological networks of neurons in human brains. It is one of the most active areas of research in machine learning and is widely used in computer vision applications and speech recognition. Finally, we talked about RL, a field in machine learning where the agents learn through experience. It trains agents to take actions that maximize the expected reward.